Hi, Mike Bellevue here. Uh, I want to apologize. I don't have a full-length video for you all this week. Um, I've been working on a pretty involved project, and I just finished filming it yesterday, and there's no time to edit it to get something up today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a preview of it. I'm going to pull just a couple of clips out. And that project has been uh, to test the combat effectiveness of 18th century buck and ball cartridges. So it's going to be a two-part series. And the first part, by necessity, will cover making uh, buck and ball paper cartridges. <laughs> and, uh, and then from there, we'll go into testing, testing that in One. a simulated 18th century combat situation. So in part one next week, I'm going to take you through the whole procedure for making 18th century buck and ball cartridges. I'll tell you what size buckshot to use, what size ball I'm using in the brown best, and how you have to adjust that, uh, both of those components, for smaller size bores, say for a Charleville, or if you're doing a 20-gauge uh, a fowler. <clears throat> you're going to need to use different size buckshot to make that work. And I'll explain all of that while showing you how to make the cartridges. And I'll also uh, give you my references for these cartridges in the uh, U.S. Army Ordnance Manual. So that's all going to be next week. And we'll go through powder charges and kinds of powder and, and the whole nine yards. And when we're done, you will know how to make buck and ball cartridges. In the next video, I'm going to run you through a test of uh, how those cartridges would have performed in combat. And this, this was the thing that gave me the, um, the most headaches, trying to figure out an effective test uh, for buck and ball cartridges. And I think I came up with one that works, though I, I was not able to do everything I wanted to do. Uh, so there may be a follow-on video. All right, here's a closer look at the target array. Now, I'm only going to be shooting the five numbered targets. And then we're going to see if the two outlier targets pick up any hits as well. All right, it's time for the final test. I've got the target array set up at 100 yards. And I'm going to load up with buck and ball. I've already cleaned the gun. And I have fired a fouling shot, so we're good to go. So, <laughs> I've got to get my ear protection on. Uh, going to load up with buck and ball and make it happen. All right, well, that's five buck and ball at 100 yards. Let's go down there and see how we did. All right, let's see how we're doing. So the first guy, the outlier, he got hit with a buck shot and with a ball. Now, I've noticed that these buck and ball loads are throwing significantly to the right. Maybe it's me, maybe it's the load, I don't know. Uh, it is very hot and humid, so it's tiring to shoot. That could have an effect, but they've definitely been thrown to the right. So I missed with the musket ball, killing shot with a buck shot. The guy who was aimed at, at 100 yards, is perfectly safe, so he lives. This guy picked up a musket ball in the lung, a collarbone shot, so he's dead. Guy number three picked up buckshot in the arm, abdomen shot with the ball, he's dead. Guy number four, looks like he survived. Nope, nope, he did not. He's got a buckshot right down there in the guts, in the intestine, and he is gonna be in bad shape. And he also got a near miss buckshot down around his hip. Guy number five, how are you looking? Not good, buckshot in the shoulder which is good enough to take him out. Not sure what happened over there. Okay, out with a buckshot. And 
our last guy, who was not aimed at, took a uh, musket ball through the arm. Might have nicked his ribs, but at least through the arm, he is incapacitated. Well, I missed something on our old friend number four when I was by him before. I got the uh, intestine shot, but I missed the fact that we also took his hip out with a musket ball. So he would have been in very bad shape. So how effective is buck and ball? Well, I'm not loving it. But I'll tell you what, I would not want to have volley fire against me shooting it because it's thrown up a screen of lead. And if there's a second rank behind these guys, I'm sure they're picking up some of the misses from this first round. So that's what buck and ball does. And at 100 yards, that buckshot is spreading all over the place, totally uncontrolled. But if you're firing at a mass of troops, something's going to get hit. Well, that's our little preview of the upcoming Buck and Ball cartridge series. Uh, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber and you want to see it, and you want, you want to get notifications, then subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. And uh, we try to drop these at 7 a.m. every every Thursday. It doesn't always happen, but uh, that's the plan. So join the channel and uh, you'll see plenty of good content just like this. So until next week, bye.